when you're trying to hire somebody that is an expert in data modeling, what are the things that you would look for? Well, that is a very interesting question because, um, yeah, usually we are involved into the hiring interviews. Uh, so the first thing I try to look for is to to see if they know what a data model is. But um, beyond that, why is it important and why we're doing it? Because sometimes it's very easy to fall into the trap like uh, I am pro uh, dimensional modeling or I am pro X uh, modeling technique and then blind yourself to anything else. And if it's not the flavor you like, then it's not a good data model. And I think that uh, now the data platforms and the data requirements for each business are so widely different that you are going to end having different data models in different uh, stages of your data platform. And uh, uh, you need to know a little bit of each one, maybe not be an expert on, on all of them, but and know them and see what are their um, main points and main strengths. You're talking about like things like Kimball, Data Vault, and so on, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the the corporate information factory from Inmon or uh, the dimensional modeling, the enterprise data warehouse for uh, Ralph Kimball or the uh, business intelligence platform uh, from or Data Vault 2.0 from Daniel Instead that try to tackle different things on the data warehousing, specifically on the data warehousing. But then if you go to the BI realm, you see other type of models like uh, one big table or uh, the normalized models that help uh, the BI tool to serve faster the data. And usually knowing what to use, it's a big question. And sometimes you need to use different in, in, in combination. So, um, I think that if you're going to model data, you need to be open-minded and, and try to exploit the best uh, characteristics of the, what is out there to, to get the most out of your data. Which is interesting because we have all of these methodologies and ways of doing data modeling. Well, at least maybe the physical side. And what I noticed quite a lot is we're in an age where a lot of people are handpicking some of the things that you like from this one, some of the things that you like from this one. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. But that seems to be a little bit what you were mentioning, right? Yeah, but well, th there is a small difference between cherry picking what you like of, of, of the methodology <laughs> and using different uh, modeling techniques, right? If yeah. you decide to use Kimball, then I expect to see your dimension and your facts uh, clearly in your data model. If you say that you are using Kimball and I, I see normalized tables in your data model, then it's not Kimball. So I think that uh, for if, if you really want to benefit from the methodologies that you're using, you need to, to follow their standards and you need to do things right. What I, what I think is that you need to be open to the idea of, okay, for this system, I need to model this in this way. And for this other one, it's better if I do this other thing. And maybe this third system needs a very um, uh, hard audit and it's uh, very different from others. So I better use this other technique. So I think that that is what I mean of being open-minded. Because if you start cherry picking uh, small parts of one methodology, then you end up with a Frankenstein and then nobody understands what you're doing. By system, you mean technology or more like the environment, the company, the constraints? Uh, that's a good question. So when I mean system is like the data system. So it can be the data warehouse or right. the cloud environment. But um, yeah, sometimes that uh, barrier, it's a little, or that line is a little bit hard to, to draw because the business can also have different uh, views on things and maybe you have data outside of your data system. Uh, that is the case, for example, with a lot of uh, spreadsheets, uh, Excel spreadsheets that are going around in emails here and there in many companies that we know. Uh, that is data that is not in your data system and you need to account for. Uh, that is also a challenge. Interesting. I think what we have been talking so far is really towards the physical and sometimes a little bit of the logical side of data modeling, but we haven't talked too much about the conceptual. 
No, that's true. So I think that the conceptual side of data modeling is tied more with the business side of things. So usually what starts these conversations is um, if you are going to create a system uh, from scratch or if you're going to migrate a system from one system to the other, then usually you start asking the business what you want to achieve, where is your value, what are the things that you want to measure, and then uh, you start looking into things that uh, become key point areas and then um, key, proce key process areas and key point of interest. Um, so uh, then you start defining metrics and then you can uh, go into the, into the logical how the data connects. So I think uh, the conceptual part of uh, the thing uh, of data modeling is more on the how the business works, understanding the business and translating that into how the data will represent it better. In an ideal universe, I would think the business fully handles the conceptual modeling part. Logical is more of a negotiation between the data team and the business. And then the physical implementation is 100% up to the data team. Now, in, in practice, quite often we as uh, technical implementators, we end up doing everything from the conceptual and even understanding how the business works. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that a lot. Um, uh, sadly, I see also that many data professionals uh, start to think that uh, data modeling now is a waste of time and they don't spend enough time on the conceptual and logical uh, data models because they, they feel like the, data f the, the, the physical model of the data model has everything in it. So why spend time and effort in the other things? Let's be agile, go directly to the physical. And then um, I like to... I like to think this as an analogy. If you sure. are uh, if you are given 1,000 Lego blocks and they ask you to build a car, the most probable thing is that you end up with a car. But if I give you a model with instructions on how to build an F1 car with those 1,000 Lego bricks, your car is going to look more um, professional than the one that you would build without these instructions. So... I think that that is data modeling. You you first decide how it's going to look, what this is going to be used for, and then you start building. And uh, not doing the conceptual and logical steps, it's just go running uh, to start building, and you end up with something that might resemble something usable, but maybe not the best for the long term. Indeed, how I heard that recently, nobody builds a building without a blueprint. Yes, well, yeah. I come from Latin America and I know... Okay, fair enough, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know people that do. Uh, but yeah, that is an excellent example. If you look for a house that is not being built with a blueprint, then you can see how yep. then uh, the son-in-law then came in and, and then a new room was added without thinking or a third floor without asking if the a structure can handle it and then a lot of accidents happen or yeah it, it looks like it don't belong there yeah. so i think it's the same it's the same analogy at the same time i don't necessarily blame us data professionals for having such a big emphasis on the physical part of data modeling because as somebody that recently started doing the conceptual part i've noticed it's really hard and I don't think that many people are built for that. Like, you really need to be able to go talk to very important people in a company and get them to agree to things that they consider very trivial, like, no, tell me when exactly somebody becomes a customer or what should be the official word for this in French or the official word for this in English, Spanish, or whatever. Whatever places where your company also happens to sell. And that requires a lot of buy-in, that requires a lot of work. So I, I see a lot of people might be tempted to, no, I get hired to the SQL part, and uh, it should have been your business to get this done and give me these documents. 